Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and I know Amy 1 is right around the corner. In fact, it's on this week's Tuesday, so this will serve as a very, very late Amy prep. Or if you're taking Amy 2, you can use this as Amy prep as well. So this is going to be uh, 2016 Amy 1 problem number 11. Let's first take a look at the problem. Let p of x be a non-zero polynomial such that x minus 1 times p of x plus 1 is equal to x plus 2 times p of x for every real x. And p of 2 squared is equal to p of 3, some random condition. And we want to find p of 7 over 2, another random number. So how might we go about solving this? So first, um, uh, do we see anything interesting about these numbers themselves, like 2, 3, and 7 over 2? Well, 7 over 2 is uh, 3.5. So it doesn't seem to have any sort of relationship with p of 2 or p of 3 as, like, if we look at it right now. So let's just leave that aside and take a look at the condition itself. So if we look at this condition, we see that we have some sort of equality case between the product of the polynomial and some term and the product of the polynomial and some other term. So uh, if it's in this format, we might be motivated to start plugging in random numbers for x because it says that this is true for every real x. And now what type of number should we try to plug in? Well, let's try to plug in numbers so that x minus 1 or x plus 2 equals 0. This way one of the sides is equal to 0, so that means the other side is also equal to 0. So let's plug in x equals 1. If you plug in x equals 1, then you get that, well, the left-hand side is now 0, so 0 is equal to, you get that uh, 3 times p of 1. Well, that means that p of 1 is simply just going to equal 0, which means that uh, 1 is a root of this polynomial. So x mi minus 1 divides p of x. Well, what that means that we can sub uh, substitute p1 of x is equal to uh, x minus 1, or sorry, p of x. We want to substitute p of x is equal to x minus 1 times p1 of x, right? Because now, uh, this is basically just factoring out x minus 1 out of p of x. Uh, so now that we have this x minus 1 factor already, uh, already counted for, we can just plug this back in to get x minus 1 times, well, p of x plus 1 is equal to x times p1 of x plus 1. And then on the other side, we have x plus 2 times uh, just x minus 1 times p1 of x. Now we note that the x minus 1s cancel out, so we are left, up, left with x times p1 of x plus 1 equals x plus 2 times p1 of x. And this is suspiciously similar to the first uh, equation that we have, except for with instead of x minus 1, it's replaced with x. So this motivates us to make another substitution. p1 of x is equal to something times p2 of x. And what is this something? Well, just like before, in, we plugged in 1. Now we plug in 0 to get that the left-hand side is going to be 0. And the right-hand side is going to be p1 of 0, which means that x divides p1 of x, which means that this term that we have here should be x. So now, again, we can plug this in to get x times x plus 1 times p2 of x plus 1. Uh, what does this equal? This equals x plus 2 times uh, p2 of x times x. And now the x's cancel out, and now we're even closer. Now we have an x plus 1 term instead of an x term. And we see that this term right here is gradually going towards x plus 2. So uh, let's keep on going and see what happens when we actually get there. Again, plug in x equals negative 1. You get that negative 1 is a root of p2 of x, which means that x plus 1 divides p2 of x. p2 of x. So that means we can plug in p3 of x. p2 of x is equal to x plus 1 times p3 of x. p3 of x. And now plugging this in, we have 
that, let's see, the x is here cancelled out, so that means we have x plus 1 times x plus 2 times p3 of x plus 1 equals x plus 2 times uh, x plus 1 times p3 of x. Now we note that uh, x plus 1 and x plus 2 cancel out with x plus 2 times x plus 1. So we're left with p3 of x plus 1 is equal to p3 of x. Now what does this tell us? Well this tells us that p3 is periodic with period 1 because the value of p3 of x is the same as the value of p3 of x plus 1. Let's let this be c then inductively we can that get that this is the same thing as p3 of x plus k for any integer k. And in particular, this means that uh, p3 of x plus k minus c equals 0 for all uh, integers k. But that's not good, because if a polynomial is equal to 0 for infinite, infinitely many values, then it must be identically equal to 0, which means that p3 of x is actually equal to c, or for a constant c, for all, uh, for all x. Right. So now we know that p3 of x is equal to c. Well, back substituting, we get p2 of x is equal to c times x plus 1. Uh, p1 of x is equal to c times x plus 1 times x. And then p of x, finally, is equal to c times x plus 1 times x times x minus 1. So now we actually have an explicit formula for p of x given this condition. This condition tells us that p of x must equal c times x plus 1 times x times x minus 1 for some c. So now it's clear that we can use this condition p2 squared is equal to p3 now. Let's go back here. p2 squared is equal to p3. Well, this tells us that uh, c times x plus 1 is 3, x is 2, x minus 1 is 1 is equal to, or this squared, is equal to uh, c times x plus 1 is 4 times 3 times 2, which means that c is equal to uh, 4 times 3 times 2 divided by 3 times 2 times 1 squared, which is equal to 4 divided by 6, which is equal to 2 thirds. Okay. So we know that c is equal to 2 thirds, which means that p of x is equal to 2 thirds uh, x plus 1 times x times x minus 1, which finally means that p 7 halves is equal to 2 thirds times 9 halves times 7 halves times 5 halves, then this is equal to, well, the 2's cancel out, 3 cancel out with 9 to give right here, 3 times 7 times 5 is equal to 105, and over 4, so uh, this is in the format m over n, and we want to find m plus n, which means that our final answer is going to be uh, 105 plus 4, or 109. And this is our answer. We are done. Hey guys, Long here, back to another math video. Today we're going to be doing 2017 AMC 12B, problem 22. You might recognize this if you took the AMC 12 test. 